Paris, 1954. A young mathematician stands before the world, 27 years old. No spectacle, no speeches, only a few pages of proof. In them, a new language, a way to see space, symmetry, and number as one. He called nothing revolutionary, but what he built would remake modern mathematics. For half a century, his ideas would echo in topology, in geometry, in the very logic of number itself. He sought no fame, only precision. His name was Jean-Pierre Serre. And this is the story of how he made mathematics listen. Jean-Pierre Serre was born on September 15, 1926, in Bages, a small commune in the Pyrenees Orientales of southern France. The Serre family lived modestly. His father was a local civil servant. His mother encouraged books and discipline. There was no library of scholars, no family tradition of mathematics, only an insistence that work be done thoroughly or not at all. Jean-Pierre read everything he could find, puzzles, logic problems, high school textbooks borrowed ahead of schedule. Teachers at the Lycée de Nîmes soon realized that his grasp of abstraction outpaced his age. He was quiet, self-contained, never careless. Mathematics, for him, was not competition. It was craftsmanship. Where classmates sought answers, he sought structure. Archival notebooks show pages of hand-drawn diagrams and algebraic shorthand. He would redo entire solutions, reducing them line by line until no unnecessary mark remained. That pursuit of concision, what he later called mathematical hygiene, was already visible. By adolescence, Serre's correspondence with older students hinted at a deepening curiosity, topology the geometry of continuous shape. He once wrote in a school essay, to understand a space, one must first ask what it refuses to change. Decades later, that sentence would read like prophecy. In 1945, the Second World War had just ended when Serre entered the École Normale Supérieure, ENS, in Paris. ENS was more than an institution. It was France's mathematical crucible still echoing with the work of Elie Cartan, Henri Cartan, and André Weil. For a student from provincial origins, the transition was disorienting and electrifying. Lectures moved at the speed of thought. Problems circulated informally in cafes and corridors. Post-war France was rebuilding its intellectual infrastructure, and mathematics was part of that renewal. Topology, a field concerned with the essence of shape, was undergoing a transformation, seeking algebraic language to express geometric intuition. Serre entered that frontier naturally. Guided by Henri Cartan, he began to merge algebra with geometry in a new way. The project that would define his early career was already forming. Understanding how local information in a geometric space determines its global structure. He absorbed the new tools of homology and cohomology, not as techniques, but as metaphors for balance and connection. In 1951, at the Sorbonne, Serre defended his doctoral dissertation, Homologie Singulière des Espaces Fibres. Applications. In it, he constructed a precise bridge between topology and algebra. He introduced concepts that would evolve into the Serre spectral sequence and Serre fibration, mechanisms for dissecting spaces layer by layer, revealing hidden relationships. The defense lasted hours. Witnesses recall a calm, deliberate presentation, no theatrics, no hesitation. He ended with a remark typical of his understatement, it works well enough, though one should still check the details. Those details would become pillars of modern topology. Jean-Pierre Serre had found his voice. Soon, the world of mathematics would learn to listen.
By the early 1950s, Jean-Pierre Serre was no longer a student, but a craftsman refining the tools of an entire discipline. He had joined the Centre National de la Recherche Scientifique, CNRS, a laboratory of ideas, not machines. His colleagues recall a young man who preferred the quiet of the blackboard to the ceremony of meetings, and who rarely spoke except to simplify. Between 1948 and 1954, Serre refined what his thesis had begun. He developed the Serre spectral sequence, an algebraic engine that allowed mathematicians to read the topology of complex spaces through successive approximations. It turned an intractable wilderness into a navigable landscape. He formalized the notion of Serre vibrations, families of spaces behaving in controlled, predictable ways under deformation. This new vocabulary reshaped the way mathematicians approached the homotopy groups of spheres, a problem that had resisted attack for decades. In seminar rooms at the Sorbonne and the Collège de France, Serre's blackboard proofs became legend, concise, quiet, and final. Amid the post-war gathering of the world's mathematical elite, a 27-year-old Frenchman received the Fields Medal. He was the youngest laureate in history. The citation praised his outstanding achievements in the topology of fiber spaces and the homotopy groups of spheres. But behind the formal language was something subtler, recognition that Serre had changed the way abstraction itself was handled. By the mid-1950s, Serre's attention turned to algebraic geometry, a field undergoing transformation. Where topology dealt with continuous shapes, algebraic geometry worked with equations, rigid, discrete, and ancient. But the two worlds, he realized, could inform each other if one could translate between them. In 1955, Serre published Faisceau Algébrique Cohérent, Cohérent Algebraic Sheaves, in the Annals of Mathematics. The paper introduced the Gaga principle, Géométrie Algébrique et Géométrie Analytique, establishing a bridge between the analytic geometry of complex variables and the algebraic geometry of polynomial equations. The theorem did not solve a problem. It erased a boundary. At the Institut des Hautes Études Scientifiques, IHS, Serre met Alexander Grotendieck, another young visionary whose ideas burned with intensity. Their collaboration was a rare fusion of temperaments, Grothendieck's sweeping generality, meeting Serre's surgical precision. Grothendieck later wrote, Serre taught me what it means to state something clearly. By the late 1950s, Serre had joined the Collège de France, holding the chair of algebra and geometry. He was 30 years old. His lectures, often standing room only, were models of economy. Every symbol written on the board served a purpose every word aimed at understanding rather than persuasion. He taught that abstraction was not escape, but compression, the art of saying more with less. For his students, this was not style, it was revelation. The world saw a mathematician at the height of clarity. Serre saw only more connections waiting to be named. In the early 1960s, Jean-Pierre Serre turned toward a realm older than geometry, the world of numbers. In 1962, Serre published Cours Locaux, Local Fields, a slender but monumental book that became a cornerstone of modern number theory. It distilled the abstract machinery of local fields, mathematical spaces built around prime numbers, into a form so clear that even the most intricate arithmetic structures could be seen at a glance. For young mathematicians, Cours Loco was a revelation, precision without ornament, depth without obscurity. Every lemma, every proof felt inevitable. Where others built arguments, Serre built understanding. His prose made even the infinite seem finite for a moment. Serre's earlier work on topology and geometry now fed directly into number theory through the study of Galois representations. 
algebraic structures that encode how numbers transform under symmetries. He collaborated with John Tate, Jean-Pierre Deligne, and many others, building the foundations of what would later be called arithmetic geometry. This synthesis of algebra, geometry, and arithmetic led Serre to propose one of his most enduring ideas, Serre's modularity conjecture, linking the mysterious world of modular forms to the arithmetic of elliptic curves. It was a bridge that would not be fully crossed until 2008, when Chandra Shekhar Kar and Jean-Pierre Wintenberger finally proved it. Decades later, the same conjecture would echo in Andrew Wiles's proof of Fermat's last theorem, a distant ripple from the clarity Serre had drawn half a century earlier. Serre's writings from this period became canonical texts. A Course in Arithmetic, 1970, condensed an entire field into 100 pages of precision. Linear Representations of Finite Groups, 1977, taught generations of mathematicians how symmetry governs the algebraic world. Each line was crafted with deliberate clarity, each problem felt like a window rather than a wall. He often advised young mathematicians, never use two words where one will do, and never one where silence suffices. Recognition followed, though Serre met it with the same reserved composure he brought to his proofs. In 1985, he received the Balzan Prize for his contributions to topology and geometry. In 2000, the Wolf Prize honored his lifetime of achievement. And in 2003, the Abel Prize, mathematics equivalent of the Nobel, acknowledged what the field already knew, that Serre had shaped the very language of modern mathematics. When asked how it felt to influence every branch of mathematics, he replied simply, It's not influence, it's conversation.